this is the second part of the topic properties of gcd now we can discuss another property we have a theorem 3.6 if d equal to gcd of a and b and d dash is any common divisor of a and b then d dash divides d that is if d is the gcd of a and b and d dash is any common divisor of a and b then d dash should divides d now this theorem has a simple proof we are given that d equal to the gcd of a and b therefore by the previous theorem that is the theorem that we proved in the previous lecture that is theorem 3.5 there exists alpha and beta such that d equal to alpha a plus beta b the theorem was the gcd of any numbers a and b can be expressed as a linear combination of a and b itself that is if d is a gcd of a and b then we can express d as a linear combination of a and b that is we can find as alpha and beta such that d equal to alpha a plus beta b now we are given that d dash is any common divisor of a and b so since d dash is any common divisor of a and b we have d dash divides a and d dash divides b since d d dash is a common divisor of a comma b we have d dash divides a and d dash divides b therefore we have d dash divides the linear combination of a and b this is by theorem 2.4 i think theorem 2.4 that is d, d dash divides a and d dash divides b therefore d dash divides alpha a plus beta b so d dash divides d because d equal to this so d dash divides c so we obtain that if d is the gcd of a and b and if d dash is any common divisor of a and b then d dash divides d so we have every common divisor d dash of a and b is a factor of their gcd clear every common divisor d dash of a and b is a factor of gcd d. and d dash is less than or equal to d that is what is we proved in the previous theorem now conversely suppose that d divides a and d divides b also suppose that if d dash divides a and d dash divides c implies d dash divides d then d dash is less than or equal to d we'll get d dash is less than or equal to d and so d equal to greatest common divisor of a and b that is if d divides a and d divides b and the second condition is if d dash divides a and d dash divides b then d dash divides d then we have d dash should be less than or equal to d and so d equal to to gcd of a comma b therefore we can modify the symbolic definition of gcd as follows there is an alternate definition of gcd a positive integer d is the gcd of a and b if d divides a and d divides b and the second condition is if d dash divides a and d dash divides b then d dash divides d where d dash is a positive integer this is the an alternate definition of gcd or this is the modified definition of gcd by using the above theorem actually the definition of the gcd is nothing but uh, d is said to be a gcd of a and b if d divides a and d divides b and if d dash divides a and d dash divides b then d dash should be less than or equal to d that is we obtain from this this implies uh, from this we get this so we can for redefine the gcd as like this now we have a theorem theorem 3.7 let a b and c be any positive integers then the gcd of ac and bc is equal to c into gcd of a and b you can try to prove this uh, the proof is straight forward okay i am leaving to you next theorem is theorem 3.8 two positive integers a and b are relatively prime if and only if there are integers alpha and beta such that alpha a plus beta b equal to 1 this is an if and only con if and only if condition that is first part is if a and b are relatively prime then there exists alpha and beta such that alpha a plus beta b equal to 1 this is direct and the second part is that is the sufficient part is if we can express one as a linear combination of a and b then a and b are relatively prime that is this theorem says that if uh, a and b are relatively prime means a comma b equal to 1 if and only if 
one can be written as alpha a plus beta b for some integers alpha and beta as if a and b are relatively prime then uh, one a, one can be expressed as a linear combination of a and b and this is an infinitely condition so to prove this first part is suppose that a and b are relatively prime then we have a b equal to 1 yes gcd of a b equal to 1 therefore we know by previous theorem we have there are integers alpha and beta such that alpha a plus beta b equal to 1 that is if uh, d equal to a a comma b then d can be expressed as a linear combination of a and b that is by theorem 3 5 here d equal to 1 so 1 can be expressed as a alpha a plus beta b by the previous theorem so first part is over now conversely suppose that alpha a plus beta b equal to 1 now we have to show that a and b are relatively prime that is to show that a comma b equal to 1 gcd of a comma b equal to 1 now let d equal to gcd of a comma b therefore to show that we have to prove that a gcd of a b equal to 1 therefore to show that uh, d equal to 1 that is we need to prove now now uh, since d equal to gcd of a and b we have d divides a and d divides b therefore from that we get d divides alpha a plus beta b okay since alpha a plus beta b equal to 1 we have d divides 1 because alpha a plus beta b equal to 1 so d divides 1 d is a positive integer which is divides 1 that means d equal to 1 therefore d equal to 1 means a b equal to 1 right therefore the gcd of a comma b equal to 1 therefore a and b are relatively prime so we have if a and b are relatively prime then if and only if uh, one can be expressed as a linear combination of a and b now we have a corollary corollary 3.1 if d equal to gcd of a and b then gcd of a by d and b by d equal to 1 so to prove this suppose d equal to gcd of a and b then we have d can be expressed as a linear combination of a and b by the previous theorem that is d equal to alpha a plus beta b for some integers alpha and beta so dividing throughout by d we get 1 is equal to alpha into a by d plus beta into b by d this is actually one can be expressed as a linear combination of a by d and b by d now d equal to gcd of a and b implies d divides a and d divides b therefore d is a common divisor or common factor of a therefore a by d and b by d are this a by d and b by d are integers therefore uh, from this one implies a by d the gcd of a by d and b by d equal to 1 that is this corollary next corollary is if gcd of a, a and b equal to 1 and gcd of a and c equal to 1 then gcd of a comma b c equal to 1 we are given that gcd of a and b equal to 1 and gcd of a and c equal to 1 then gcd of a comma b c equal to 1 gcd of a comma b equal to 1 implies one can be expressed as, expressed as a linearly linear combination of a and b that is 1 is equal to alpha a plus beta b that is there exist some alpha and beta such that positive integers alpha and beta such that 1 equal to alpha a plus beta b and since a c g c d of a comma c equal to 1 implies there exist some integers gamma and delta such that 1 is equal to gamma a plus delta c that is uh, one can be expressed as a linear combination of both a uh, linear combination of a and c now uh, we have this is equal to 1 and this is equal to 1 therefore this into this is equal to 1 so 1 is equal to alpha a plus beta b into gamma a plus delta c so uh, multiplying this we get alpha a gamma a alpha a delta c beta b gamma a and beta b delta c so taking uh, a outside from the th first three terms we get alpha gamma a plus delta c alpha plus beta r b, uh, gamma b into a plus taking here b and c outside that is b c into beta delta that is we expressed one as a linear combination of a and b c that means a comma gcd of a comma b c equal to one this is also by previous theorem so if a b equal to one gcd of a comma b equal to one and gcd of a comma c equal to one then gcd of a comma 
bc equal to 1. Next, we have an important result. Suppose we have a divides c and b divides c. Does this mean a b divides c? If you are given a divides c and b divides c, will it imply a b divides c or not? The answer is no because, for example, uh, we know 3 divides 3 divides 12 and 6 divides 12. 3 and 6 are devices of 12, but 3 into 6 is 18. 18 does not divide 12. Okay, 18 does not divide 12. So this, this is wrong. So if A divides C and B divides C, then it does not imply A B divide divides C. Okay, but if you modify this, then uh, uh, it will work. That is the corollary 3.3. .3. If A divides C and B divides C, along with this, if A and B are relatively prime, if A comma uh, GCD of A comma B equal to one, then we can say that A B divides C. That is, if A divides C and B divides C, then it does not imply A B divides C. But if A divides C and B divides C, and uh, A and B are relatively prime, then we can say that A B divides C. So here, if, if you are taking 3 and 4, 3 is a divisor of 12 and 4 is a divisor of 12. Therefore, 3 into 4, 3 into 4 is 12 is a divisor of 12. Here actually, this is GCD of 3 comma 4 is equal to 1. So uh, along with this, if this is also true, then we can say that A into B is a divisor of C. So to prove this, given that A divides C, a divides C means we have C can be expressed as some M in A for some integer M. That is A divides C means C is a multiple of A that is M can be C can be expressed as M into A. Similarly, we are given that B divides C. So we can express from since B divides C implies we can express C equal to N into B that is C is a, B, uh, C is a multiple of B that is C equal to N B for some integer N. Now, since GCD of A comma B equal to 1, we have 1 is equal to alpha A plus beta B for some integers alpha and beta. We can express the GCD 1 as a linear combination of this A and B. So, from this we get, if we multiply this equation with C, we get alpha A C plus beta B C equal to C. Now, we have these values for C, C equal to MA and C equal to NB. So, here we are substituting NB here, this C, we are substituting NB and for this C, we are substituting MA. So, in that case, we will get alpha A into NB plus beta B into this can be replaced by this MA, MA equal to C. That is, our, our aim is to uh, take AB outside. So, uh, here we already have A, so we can use this and here we have already have B so we can choose this A. So alpha A into NB plus beta B into MA equal to C. So taking AB outside we get AB into N alpha plus M beta equal to C. That means AB is a uh, factor of C that is AB divides C. So if A comma A divides C, B comma B divides C and GCD of AB equal to one that is A and B are relatively prime, then we can say that AB divides C. Now, if A divides BC, is it imply A divides B or A divides C? It's also not true. That is A divides BC does not imply A divides B or A divides C. It is possible only when a comma b that is gcd of a comma b is 1 that is if if a divides bc and gcd of a comma b equal to 1 or a and b are relatively prime then we can say that a divides b or a divides b generally we cannot say that a divides bc implies a divides b or a divides c okay that is a corollary by euclid if a and b are relatively prime that is GCD of A comma B equal to 1 and if A divides BC then A divides C that is if A divides BC and A and B are relatively prime then A divides C 
Now we can discuss the proof. We are given that A and B are relatively prime. That is GCD of A and B equal to 1. Therefore, by the previous theorem 3.8, we have 1 can be expressed as a linear combination of both A and B. Where that is there exists integers alpha and beta such that alpha A plus beta B equal to 1. So, multiplying here throughout by uh, C, we get alpha A C plus beta B C equal to C. Now, we have A divides alpha A C because A is a factor of alpha A C. Therefore, A divides A alpha A C. Also, A divides beta B C because we are given that A divides B C. A divides B C we are given. Therefore, A divides beta B C. This reason is given A divides B C. So, we have A divides alpha A C and A divides beta B C. Therefore, A divides alpha A C plus beta B C. This is by theorem 2.4. So, we obtain that A divides alpha A C plus beta B C. But we have alpha A C plus beta B C equal to C. Therefore, A divides C.